In this tutorial, I'll be talking about smart objects, variable frame rates, and how to reduce the size of your GIF by removing either frames or a section of your animation. Imagine you have a vault and you have a bunch of things to put in it. Before you put them in the vault, you take a photo of them. And then once you've put them in the vault and shut it, you stick the photo on the outside so that you can always see what's inside it. It doesn't matter what you do to the photo. You can write on it or draw on it or erase parts of it. You can cut it up. You can make copies of it. But no matter what you do to it, the contents of the vault remain untouched. So if one day you go and open your vault, you'll still have all the things that you put in there exactly the way they were when you put them in there. That's what a smart object is, essentially. <laughs> When you save your layers into a smart object, you're left with the photo. So that smart object, you can write on it, draw on it, cut it up, erase parts of it, duplicate it. You can treat it as you would treat any layer in Photoshop. It took me a while to figure out why my file sizes were sometimes really large and sometimes not. And that's actually when I started to figure out what smart objects actually were and did. So let me just show you here. I've got this um, GIF that I've started working on. I've saved it with the dimensions of 540 by 304 pixels. And as you can see, there are 51 frames. So I'll just show you in Finder. This is 23.6 megabytes. This is one that I've saved where I have left the images at their original size, which is 1920 by 1080. And if we go back and look here, the large one, this file size is 279.1 megabytes. It's still 280 megabytes versus 24 megabytes if you round up. And that's because, like I said, your smart object retains your layers as they were. So inside the smart object, my images are still 1920 by 1080. It doesn't matter that I resize them now to 540 by 304. And I can show you this by right clicking on the smart object. If you go to edit contents, here you go. And so you can see 1920 by 1080. 51 images with those dimensions are inside that smart object that when I look at it is 540 by 304 pixels. That's why the file is so big. So that's really, for me, the only downside to them is that if you forget <laughs> that to resize your image, you're going to be lugging around 10 times the size of a file that as you would if you had remembered to resize it. By the way, that doesn't affect the eventual size of your GIF. It just affects the, the, the size of your Photoshop file. I can show you this by right clicking on the smart object. If you go to edit contents, you'll get this PSB file. All you need to do there is go to save as as you can see, a temporary copy is saved somewhere in the depths of your library in this folder. But if you change this to where you want it to go, and then you change the format into Photoshop, now you have a, a PSD file. You have what you had here before you made it a smart object. When you're making larger size GIFs that are 540 pixels wide, you'll often have to sacrifice portions of a shot in order to fit the eventual GIF size under Tumblr's limits. The largest contributor, obviously, is the individual images themselves. So the more frames you have and the larger the frames are, the more data is in the file. 51 frames is too many for a GIF of this size. It will definitely be over five megabytes. 
I usually try to stay under 40 frames. Um, that's still pushing it a lot of the time. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I crop my images sometimes quite severely. It's because I don't want to sacrifice part of the shot. Realistically, 30 to 35 frames is probably the best median to aim for when you're making a large GIF like this. It gives you a little bit of leeway. It's going to be over 3 megabytes, but probably not that much, especially if you don't want to sacrifice your height because, for example, um, a GIF of this size, if I left this at 304 pixels high, is going to have a significantly larger file size than if I cropped it down to my usual 250 pixels. So that 54 pixels actually represents quite a significant amount of data. So obviously the larger the image, the fewer the frames to balance out your file size. Normally what I do is I take from the top or the bottom of the shot, or sometimes both. I'll delete the first six frames here. So all you have to do is highlight them, and then you go down here to the little bin, click on that, and they're gone. And I still have 45 frames, which is still too many. Now I want to turn it into a smart object, except I have all these extra layers that I, I'm i not going to be using. So they're very simple to delete. You just delete them the way you would any other layer. So I just highlight them and press the little bin and they go away. And then I'm going to scroll down to create my smart object. And then I'm going to delete these ones at the end. So that's how you delete your frames and layers prior to converting your layers into a smart object. I saved a second copy of this GIF with all 51 layers in my smart object. And now I want to cut some of it out to reduce the file size. To do that, you go to this little pair of scissors here and it will tell you it's called split playhead. I think of it as trimming, um, but it basically just means you can cut bits off of your animation in order to make it shorter, which reduces the file size. I'm going to go from the top and the bottom again. I have the playhead where I want it. I press on the scissors and it cuts it so that I have, I now have two animations. I have the original file name and then I have the copy, which is the larger piece at the moment. So I'm going to delete that and then I need to move this. This frame, as you can see, if you look at down the bottom, you can see that there is, it starts at 318 it goes 19, 20, and then 21, it changes to a different frame. So I'm gonna cut there, which will cut out this frame onwards and retain the previous frame. So I've selected that one and I press the bin. In the previous tutorial, I mentioned that when you convert your frame animation to the video timeline, each layer in the timeline represents the frame plus the frame delay. Photoshop's animation speed is set to 30 frames per second. And here I've specified a 0.1 frame delay. So that means every frame in this GIF is visible for three frames in the video. At the bottom of the window, you have the running time and it shows as seconds and frames. So the 318 represents 3 seconds and 18 frames into the animation. If I cut this at 319 or 320, the frame that spans 318 to 320 would appear in both cut sections, so one at the beginning and one at the end, obviously. The benefit of doing it this way 
is that because this is a smart object, and as we know, smart object is a vault, you will still have all 51 layers left if you want to go back and go into your smart object and look at all your contents again. So see, all 51. So even though you've cut it up, it's all still in there. In this example, I want to speed up a section in the middle of this shot. So I'll just run it through and show you. See there's, there's a bit in here between when he looks down and then when he looks back up that when you watch it on screen, it looks fine, but watching it as single GIF, it feels like it goes for too long. But I don't want to actually cut the GIF anywhere because it would be too obvious if I cut the middle out of it and it's a reaction shot and I want it in there. All right, so I'm going to do 13 to 22, and I want them to I want to speed these up. So I'm going to change the frame delay to 0 0.5 0 0.05 seconds, which is basically well, which is half of the frame delay of the other frames. It doesn't feel like it's dragging anymore, which it did before, in my opinion. His expression looks natural. There are no missing frames, so it doesn't look jerky, it's just that little bit in the center of the gif has been sped up so that the pause between looking down and then looking back up has been shortened. Sometimes um, in different circumstances I might change every second frame I might, or every third frame. Um, it's really a case-by-case -case thing. There's no way to predict what you're going to want to do with any individual GIF until you actually get it to this point and look, start looking at it as, as a single shot versus a shot in amongst a lot of other shots. Because there's, there's a lot of difference between a series of shots that happen one after the other in continuity and those individual shots when you break them down and you're just looking at them one at a time. And that's really all there is to it. It's just a matter of you deciding how you want your gift to look and then adjusting the frame delay accordingly. You just have to experiment and, and try things out and see what happens. <laughs> If you have any questions or you need something explained in more detail, please come talk to me on Tumblr. Next up, I'll finally be getting to editing. <laughs>